I'm the um, CEO and co-founder of LaserPay. We are, we are still um, really early and we've processed over $90,000 in transaction volume already. At the moment, we have about um, $1.1 million invested into like, LaserPay. How old are you again? I think there was... How old are you? I'm 19. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I obviously know your name, but if you if you can just say your name and uh, what how would you, how would you describe what you're building? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm Joko Emmanuel, and I'm the um, CEO and co-founder of LaserPay. Yeah, so um, LaserPay is basically a crypto payments gateway. I like to call it the Stripe for crypto. What we are basically doing is helping businesses, you know get access to like a global payment infrastructure that's actually running on um, crypto rails and making it you know seamless and easy for like people to um, make payments using um, cryptocurrencies such as USDT, BUSD, DAI and USDT. Yeah. Basically stable coins. You're building LaserPay and how old are you again? I think there's... How old are you? 19. <laughs> okay. All right. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, thanks. Take your business global in five minutes. How did that slogan come up? So that slogan actually came up um, based off of the idea we had about LaserPay. We actually want to like give um, African businesses an opportunity to like um, a global audience. So that's why we say, okay, take your business global. And then um, we um, really optimize our onboarding time. So that's why the five minutes is there. And then as an African business, right, you're coming on on LaserPay, you're like, okay, here, take your business global in five minutes and start accepting payments from your clients everywhere in the world anywhere why was that important to you it was actually important to me because getting to like speak with a lot of um businesses and a lot of vendors especially digital creators right um they run into like issues accepting payments from global clients and that actually limits them and then they tend to like focus on you know clients within their region where you know accepting payments is actually easier that way your your customers or your you are actually limiting yourself from actually from a global reach, right, to a global audience. Basically, it was more like there was this problem you mm -hmm. saw and then you are figuring out the best way to solve this problem. How, how are people using LaserPay? How are people using your service? We have um, fintech apps, okay. right? Um, fintech provide that. We have like um, e-commerce vendors as well. And also um, online vendors that actually don't have a fiscal store using the platform to like accept payments. So, so yeah, I mean, the idea was actually born out of a personal problem I faced, right? You know, trying to like um, make payments to a, a charity organization back in Nigeria, right? And then that was when I actually saw how difficult it is for people. I was in, I was in Dubai then, and that, that's where I you know, saw how difficult it is for like people um, abroad or people that are not in the African region, right? Like um, make payments like um, businesses back in Africa. You, you mentioned something about uh, you're trying to make payment to a charity organization. Was it Nigerian? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's called um, TechRity. Okay. So um, they help, you know, people get started in tech by um, giving them laptops and courses, basically. Speaking of uh, uh, people now, how many people are currently using LaserPay and how many businesses are using Okay, as of yesterday, we had about 710 businesses onboarded. Cool. Yeah. Are you more of B2B or are you focused on consumers as well? Yeah, essentially, it's a B2B platform, right? Okay. Or, you know, we also have the consumer end, which is our which is our checkout, right? Because, you know, these businesses have customers and that customers use um, pay through laser pay. So what are, what's uh, maybe products on that you, like, are you doing, um, like right now I see you accept payments, uh, uh, you provide wallets. Okay, okay. Yeah, what are global payouts, investor and end loyalty programs? Can yeah, you just yeah, yeah. walk me through all your services? Yeah, so um, the services we actually like offer right now, uh, you can actually accept payments from anyone. You can also get crypto wallets, right, um, programmatically. And then um, you can also, you know, um, pay out your crypto. That's off-ramp your crypto to, like, fiat, like, multiple countries, right, and uh, multiple currencies. So for now, we only support USD and Naira, but we are actually, you know, slowly adding um, other currencies. And also, um, we have, like, Laser N. Which is which, which is beneficial for 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 businesses, right? Because they actually have access, like, and interest on their on the funds stored in their laser pay balance. Hmm. Has age ever been a like? Has age ever like been a barrier since you started? Has Has anybody said like, oh, uh, they won't give you opportunity because of your age? In terms of um, 
my my tech career my career as an engineer right um i didn't really you know face much setback because of my age and um luckily ukuchuko arono right okay. CEO of zen finance actually you know gave me my um first opportunity and he didn't even ask me how old i was right he just wanted to like That's know cool. if i could you know deliver on the job right and yeah in terms of you know um my career as an entrepreneur i've not really gotten like any setback right the one i can actually remember was when an investor told me that um he, he wasn't you know going to like invest because uh I I I I didn't seem to like have um you know experience building a company and um he felt that I was too young right and I was like no problems it's fine but then um generally I haven't like had any setbacks because of my age yeah okay so speaking of investments now uh-huh. what is it that you have with Nestcoin and how much has been invested into what you're building if you are been talking about it Nestcoin was actually um they were actually my first investors right um i used to work with um yele bademosi mm-hmm. right uh so in terms of you know how much has been invested overall in, in laser pay we actually raised um a four hundred and ten thousand dollars oh, cool. right and um we are doing an extension also so um i mean at at, at the moment we have about um 1.1 million dollars invested into like laser pay by investors yeah that's amazing that's interesting actually how has it changed your perspective on on you know life and you as a person like uh if you were going to looking back from maybe your 18 year old self or 17 year old self did you kind of expect this did you expect this to happen like this or was it um did everything just come all of a sudden and you were just like surprised so first of all i actually didn't expect like um you know create a company um or start a company this early right although when i was in you know um university right in my 100 level i i wanted to like build um a company i, I mean i said i said that out to my my school friends okay. right um well you know when i said and in a lot of money i was like you know what i'm just going to keep earning you know this um uh, salary and i'm not going to like think about <laughs> building any company for like um until maybe um next 10 years or whatever but um you know the problem struck and i was like i mean i have to like do this and then i started traveling across africa last year so that was when i started you know seeing these um issues first hand and then i decided i was going to like um solve it right so yeah that's uh okay okay so you okay wow <laughs> so speaking of uh um in terms of f- looking at the future now okay. for you how how do you see laser pay laser pay's trajectory going like what is what is it that you want to build next and what is it that you're working on currently i actually see um laser pay as that you know that product that company that would actually drive the adoption of um crypto in africa and um also globally right so we actually want to be at the forefront of you know driving mass crypto adoption in in, in africa and you know um changing people's mindset about crypto that it's not just you know an asset holding commodity but it can actually be part of your daily life right use it for like transactions your day to day um transactions so um i mean i you know see laser pay as as that like i said earlier right i see it as try for crypto right we are we are actually on on our path like redefining crypto payments and um really making it seamless so it's as seamless as you know paying with your card or paying by bank transfers you just paying with your card you have you have cards um so at the moment no it's okay. um you just only make payments with um stable coins okay but yeah. that's still coming that's something like yeah that that's something i you know that's something that is you know on on our road map but i still think about it every day and um try to like you know see how that would actually um play out in the crypto world or well, yeah okay how has your relationship been with like your would you describe um Yeli Baramosi or um, you know you mentioned Ugochuku from Zen Finance. Would you define them as mentors or like business partners or people that? How how would you how is the relationship between those kind of people? Yeah. Uh, And if there's anybody else. Yeah. So I'll actually describe um, them as as mentors. Okay. Right. Um, you know, 
early on in my, in my career, I actually learned a lot from um, Uguchiko Arano. And the engineer that I am today, right, I wouldn't be um, a good software engineer if, you know, Uguchiko Arano maybe didn't give me that opportunity that he gave me. I don't know, who knows, right? Or I wouldn't have that much experience or that much um, exposure, right? And then um, for Yele Bademosi, he actually calls me his junior brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah he's actually my mentor and um one thing i really you know find interesting about him when we are having a conversation is how you know he thinks about product and he also like thinks about um about business so yeah are you at all worried about um, the nigerian government in terms of this whole crypto frenzy thing and just everything that's going on <laughs> especially since you know they made the inaira mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about the inner? Have uh, you used it? Have you? To be honest, no. I've actually not seen any reason why I would um, why I would use it. You know, the idea is good, right? Um, if it works, it actually makes sense. Being okay. that it's going to like be a digital representative of the naira, and it's going to like create interoperability between um, two countries, right? Or like between you know African countries, right? Imagine <laughs> you can actually you know send inara or send a digital version of naira to like that guy in Ghana or to that that guy in Kenya. I mean, that's like you know the interesting part about um, the inara. But well, okay. yeah, for now, I actually don't see any 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 need for it especially within um the nigerian um ecosystem but well yeah but the general idea around um the inner makes a lot of sense and it's i mean it's actually interesting that you actually have um a digital version of of, of your currency Naira. yeah Naira. yeah nigeria is the first in, in, famously the first african country to, to create their own cbdc yeah and i i spoke with like the deputy governor on it and i spoke with the people that built it they seem they have good reasons good for for yeah. it but it's kind of you know interesting how the adoption has been i've not really heard so much about the inner and i don't know anyway what i also wanted to ask you was you spoke about something on engineering how did you get started with engineering did you like take courses online did you wait was it like from experience working or was it like you self-taught uh so it's a combination of all Oh, okay. Uh, right. Um, I actually started out as a, you know, taking courses on networks engineering, right? And, you know, trying out. Where did you some... get those courses from? I got it from my dad. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, nice. my, my dad is actually um, a telecommunications engineer, oh, okay. right? And um, yeah, he works at Nigeria Ojipoye Company. And some of his co- Nigerian Ojipoye Company, you know, one of the oil companies in Nigeria. Right. So, um, and then I actually know some of his colleagues as well that are computer programmers. And my dad was also taking the networking course at the time. So I actually got this from him. And um, I did, you know, the CCNA course and the CCNP um, professional um, networking course. That's that's one of the most interesting engineering courses I've ever um, taken. Right. And one of the most challenging, actually. Right. Because at the point, I, I you know, didn't know anything about electronics or um, electrical engineering. I, I was... I was actually um, in my SS1 when I took this um, course, right? So, wow. so yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I took courses online, right? Um, I took lots of um, game development courses and, you know, lots of um, programming courses as well, right? I learned um, how to, like, build um, games in C++. That was actually what, you know, got me... Um, that was actually what created my relationship with um, Ugo Chiku Arano. So when was this, like, what was the time span, like, uh, the year that you were taking courses and mm-hmm. then you started? I believe Ugo Chiku was first yeah, employment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, how was the timeline? I was actually learning for about um, three years. No, okay, three <laughs> years of learning. <laughs> yeah, three years. You hadn't, of... like, applied your skills? Uh, yeah, I mean, personal projects, oh, okay. right? But in terms of professionally... You right. hadn't applied uh, yet. So three years of learning. Yeah. And three. then you got a job. Yeah, three years of um self-learning. Mm-hmm. Right. Learning on my own and taking courses and you know, trying out building out um personal projects. And then um when I got into like university, that was when I actually got my got my first job, basically. And then um with um the game company at at Zend which um, Gochuko was working on, uh, Quiver Games, right? Uh, they actually hired me as an intern, right? So, so yeah, that was where I started working um, professionally. 
Interesting. And then, you know, left yeah. there and then down. Uh, yeah, I actually left there. And I, um, funny enough, I actually, you know, came back to like work with Ugo in, in 20, 2020. Yeah, 2020, I came back to like work, work with Ugo. It was like um, build out Zen Finance. So that's a very interesting trajectory. Looking back now, how would you, what would you tell your, your um, two-year-old self, like uh, two years ago self, like uh, if you're going to tell uh, Njoko at 16, mm-hmm. what would you tell him to do better or what would you tell him to change? Uh, so, hmm, that, 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 that's actually a, a tough one, right? But I mean, one of the things I would actually, you know, tell him to like do better is um, <laughs> network with people, mm. right? Because I'm quite, I'm, I'm, I'm basically that, that, right? I was supposed to be at the Binance events, but I, yeah, I, why I, didn't you come? <laughs> I was looking all over, like, where was this guy? Yeah, I did, I, I did. I was just, I was just, um, you know, at home and like my home office, right? Working on, working on these apps. So I'm actually really bad at networking, right? Um, which is something. And I, I, I hated going for, um, you know, tech events. events. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which is something I would have told my, you know, to my, myself two years ago that, see, you have to like, you know, go out there, you know, meet people and um, tell them more about what you do, right? And get these contacts, right? So, so yeah, um, that's that's one of them, right? And then, um, you know, the second one is basically um, my my approach towards work, mm-hmm. right? I, I mean, I don't know if it's actually a good thing or or a bad thing but i you know i tend to like do um multiple things at a time right so i multitasking yeah basically multitasking right and then i have to like do lots of context switching and i mean most times it actually make me tired easily right so i would actually tell my two year self like um you know focus on one thing right and um yeah as time goes on like you can basically you know dive into like other things right uh, but but yeah i don't know but it, it, it i mean it has actually helped me right in in many ways get getting to like deliver stuff really fast and you know getting to like pick up anything basically really fast mm. would you describe yourself as a okay a, like a jack of all trades now <laughs> Uh, I would say jack of all trades because I mean, um, like not, not looking at like specifically your knowledge on engineering now, like Mm -hmm. if you look at engineering, there are other aspects. Yeah. Are you a jack of all trades in many aspects? Yeah. I mean, I actually know, um, there, there are, um, some parts of engineering that I'm really, really familiar with and, um, which is actually my stronghold, which is like blockchain engineering and, you know, software engineering, like mobile, mobile development. Right. But then, yeah. And <laughs> I, I can, you know, refer to myself as Jack of all trades because I mean, I've, you know, touched most points, most areas at some point, game development, network engineering, you know, cyber security. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Now let's go back to this happy. You said you have 700 plus businesses. What has the feedback been like and also who is the target audience like who which kind of businesses are you expecting to work with you okay yeah yeah so um i mean feedback has been you know great right in some sense right and then um uh, uh, we've gotten you know businesses giving um giving us feedback based on one hour you know our um checkout right mm-hmm. that's like the end user facing side of the product and one of that one of that really um key feedback that we got early on when we we're in private beta was around our about our onboarding system right because initially it was taking about 10 to 15 minutes like sign up right this is without doing kyc right so it was um it was it was really you know awful then and we had um so so we had about 188 businesses then Right. But then, you know, we took that feedback in and rebuilt our entire onboarding system. And by the time we got out of private beta, right, and then um, one month, like after one month after getting out of private beta, right, we are already at um, 400 plus businesses, right, and onboarding time reduced from 15 minutes to like five minutes, right. And then, you know, customers have, um, businesses have given um, feedback on, on, you know, 
stuff they would want to like um do with laser pay right and they've also you know told us that hey i, I my, my customers want to like pay in bitcoin right or my customers want to like pay in ethereum can you you know add this support there so yeah feedback has actually been been um great and then um the, with respect to like the kind of business yeah, yeah the kind of businesses um we are looking at basically um online vendors technology startups basically right a fintech so think of it as anyone that can actually you know that actually accepts payments right any any provider or any service provider that accepts payments maybe um, a business like you know airpies that you you actually have to like book your flights and you pay for it so those are like our 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 target audience and even ig vendors mm-hmm. right exactly um with our payment link features right um those kind of businesses you know can say i i want to like buy a shoe from you on whatsapp and i'm like hey how far how much is this shoe? and you say it's thirty thousand naira, and you're like okay let me s- I, I and i'm like i want to pay in crypto and you're like okay let me send you um a payment link okay. right and then um you can we can you know we help you process that payment so any kind of business so basically. you only accept payments in stable coins and just crypto in general yeah no normal fiat no no normal fiat but we you know um um help merchants you know convert their cryptos like um, fiat so they can actually withdraw to, like their bank account or oh, okay. yeah they can withdraw to their bank accounts in naira or usd for a fee now <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay Obviously. in terms of your fees now are your fees competitive like are you do you have the best fees or okay yeah so um in terms of like payment space right mm-hmm. we actually have <laughs> the best fees right being that our platform is cheap right so um you're paying with um you're trying to like make payments with laser pay just charge you one percent right okay as opposed to like um 3.5 percent or three percent you know stripe or or pay stack charges for like card transactions and, and all of that so, yeah but then um our fees are actually you know competitive just one percent for transaction fees and also right um our crypto like payouts that's crypto transfer is actually free so oh. um if you're sending money from you know wallet a to like wallet from your laser pay balance to like um wallet b right which is a crypto wallet it's actually free right so um yeah so uh, speaking of that like is would you describe laser pay as profitable or you are still you know in the developmental phase for those or are you is there revenue and it's still balancing out yeah uh so i'd say our revenue at the moment is about 900 dollars <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Actually, right. I mean, we, we we started um we started about um you know three months ago officially, okay. Okay. right? So so we are still you know early, mm-hmm. right? We are we are still um, really early, and we've processed over ninety thousand dollars in transaction volume already, cool. right? That's in deposit transaction volume. It's more that more like people that are trying to like make payments. So that's right? about hundred k in, in exactly nice. exactly. So yeah and um you know traction is actually coming on coming on well right and we actually aim for profitability and that's where we are that's where we are you know um driving the business towards yeah mm, okay i think that's that's pretty much what yeah. i have and and is there anything you want to like add is there anything you want to say yeah i mean um in terms of like the products that laser pay right um being that we are still at the early phase right we have you know a bunch of things we are actually going to like deliver right in coming months and even coming years as well right so um yeah we actually have lots of you know products features so there's a whole lot of work going on you know on our engineering being that um we actually an infrastructure as well right people developers can actually use our apis to, like build out their products build out um crypto crypto based um wallets so yeah there's actually a whole lot of work going on on the product and, and engineering side yeah okay so is there anything any specific thing that you want people to check out in laser right now like speaking of businesses or if businesses want to to work with you now where is the first place they'll go uh, just the home page yeah so so they can actually you know one they can go to like the contact page right or um they go to like the home page basically like the, the reason i talked about our website because it's it's actually descriptive enough enough yes right it's it's really, really descriptive and, and 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 detailed enough so that's actually you know a first um good start to like learn about laser pay and get an idea of on what we are offering how did the logo come about um so this or is what actually, was the story behind the logo <laughs> so this is actually our second logo yeah yeah i this is a 
it looks like a like a book opening or something. Yeah, uh but it's it's it's, it's L. Yeah. Multiple L's. Multiple L's, right? And then it more like represents uh, you know, speed, right? Mm-hmm. Um if you look at it, the way the you know the uh the way you have like multiple L's, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's it represents um speed and um you know that's one of the things we actually stand for, right? Um, our platform is really, really fast and in terms of you know um transaction processing time as well, right? And um you know the the logo also comes you know light and yeah it sprouts out exactly exactly it sprouts out so that's basically the idea it, it's it's born out of you know the core the core um values of of laser pay right seamlessness and um you know ease of ease of use basically mm. interesting so uh i'll leave links in the description for people to check it out thank you so much for your time so that's pretty much it for this video. We've come to the end of the interview. Thank you so much for sticking around until this point. If you found this video useful at all in any way, please leave a like. I let YouTube recommend it to more people like you who would find this video useful as well. And of course, hit the red subscribe button or the bell icon beside it so you'll be the first to know when we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching again. If you have any comments, feedback, or thoughts, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll be right there chatting with you guys. That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the very next video. Oh, <laughs>